You know, even though some people have kind of fallen out of favor with Bobby Roode, he's always going to be the number one guy for me, and he will be a future Universal Champion. Guarantee it. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of The Game Changer. I am, of course, Nate the and Great, your host, being joined here by the lovely and very charismatic Victory Bell. Good morning to you. Oh, I think that the uh, sound got a little erupted there, but you know what? Uh... We'll get back to Victory Out Bell in just a bit. Uh, we're doing something a little bit different today, in which we will have the actual first time ever. We're actually going to be doing something crazy. We're actually going to be doing a kind of collaborative review, like we've done before, but we're also going to be going over some trailers that have actually been uh, put throughout the, of course, internet over the last few weeks, some of which have been very awesome, some of which have been mesmerizing, other than them have been very kind of jaw-dropping and head-scratching. And we'll get into that in a bit. So the review that we're going to be going over today will be the uh, <clears throat> will be the movie Oceans 8, which premiered last week. So spoilers are indeed to be expected. And, yeah, you can't really do that much about it. So we have our own show, haha. So Oceans 8, was it good? Was it bad, or was it just meh? Uh, from my honest opinion, going into it, I was expecting it to be pretty good. The trailers made it seem like it was good. I mean, it's got a star studded cast featuring uh, Anne Hathaway, Kate Blanchett, Sandra Bullock, and plenty of other people. And, of course, it is a spin-off to the movie Ocean's Eleven. And after watching this movie, I thought to myself, okay... I need to watch Oceans 11, 12, and 13. Maybe I'll get a little idea of, you know, who some of the characters are. Uh, maybe there's a reference in there that I kind of miss. But, um, for the most part, uh, I was a little disappointed, actually. It was one of those movies where it just, I don't know. I just felt like there was something missing. I don't know what it was, but something about it just felt like there was something missing. After watching the trailers, you're just like, okay, this could be a comedy, this could be something action-packed, but then you watch the movie and it's kind of like, why do I feel incomplete? Why does this not feel right? But, I don't know, maybe that's just me. Uh, do you have anything to add? Yeah, no, I, I watched all of the Oceans movies, so I believe it was Oceans, I think there's three of them? Oceans I think it was yep. Oceans. Nine, Oceans 10, and Oceans 11. Uh, unless it did a different... I'm pretty sure there's three of them. Yeah, you're, um, right. you're right about you that. Know, it was back in, like, the early 2000s, I believe, they were making these, and the star set cast was, like, Brad Pitt, George Clooney, Matt Damon, um, I forget, uh, what's his face? Oh, my gosh. Um, uh, Bernie Mac, uh, a, a, a crazy acrobatic Asian guy, uh, the guy who plays Iron Patriot now is was in it, and he was, like, the British guy. So there was a lot of people, basically, um, and it was all about, like, robbing casinos or robbing banks and stuff like that. So it was mo mostly around Vegas and, and casinos, so you kind of get this feel like when you're watching an Oceans movie, you know, like, they're larger than life people, they're smarter than everybody, and they're just going to be blinged out looking great, and they're about to, like, pull off this heist that no one else would do, and no one else would want to do, you know, and, you know, it usually does start with, like, an interrogation, like, to get out to parole, and they did the exact same thing, and all of a sudden, Sandra Bullock is supposed to be George Clooney's sister. So she's the ocean in that in this movie. So Ocean Danny Ocean is the was the main character in the past. Um, so Ocean's Eleven and Ocean's Ten and Ocean's whatever was the amount of people that are going to take place in the job. Um, so when we have Ocean's Eight, there's going to be eight people in the job, and like right off the bat, she's like, "Oh, we just need seven really it's called Ocean's 8 oh I wonder who else is part of the team like sorry I, I, 
I enjoyed the Oceans movies for what they were back in the day. Like, there are a lot of cool scenes of, like, casino or people being gorgeous and beautiful and shiny and then them being, you know, all suited up, all, like, their their cuffs are in line, they got, you know, all the bling that they need, they always arrive, like, really cool, and there's a diverse group of people about to take down this big casino guy for a specific reason. And so, this movie was about Sandra Bullock's character wanting to get revenge on her ex who put her in prison. Um, So, we have Sandra Bullock pretending to be, like, the George Clooney character. Then we have Kate, uh, what's her face? Kate Blanchett. Kate Blanchett was, like, Brad Pitt's character, like, her partner, her buddy-buddy, the blonde partner. Uh, who's a little more cool. Like, more like, look at me, I'm so cool, versus I do stuff really cool, but he also gets shit done, she gets shit done. Um, and yeah, so they had a, a diverse group of cast. Minnie Kaling was in there. Uh, oh, Aquafina or whatnot. She's getting up there. She's the, the little Asian girl. She was really funny. Um, it, it was just, I don't know, it was boring. Like, for the most part, like, I saw the reviews of this movie said it was really good, or so I thought the reviews said. I, I don't know what the Rotten Tomato reviews say, but I would think the Rotten Tomatoes would be a little more honest, but, like, the my main uh, movie critic uh, said it was really good, the guy I usually follow on Dean's List from Chicago. Um, he liked it. He gave it, like, a B something, so I was expecting a really good movie, but I was overall bored I I don't know like I said for me I don't know if it was really boring if it was just more I think you were just expecting more it's one of those things where you know the nostalgia kicks in when you see these trailers and then you're going in with all these high hopes and then you leave and the nostalgia wears off and it's kind of like this was not at all what I was expecting and unfortunately it was in one of the worst ways and Actually, it was really crazy because I just looked at, like, the list of some of the people that were in the original uh, Ocean's Eleven, and I was actually really surprised to see names like um, uh, Don Cheadle was involved, Brad Pitt. Uh, yeah, that's who is Iron Age. Okay. And uh, even <laughs> even our good old friend Matt Damon was involved in this, which was like, yeah, exactly. well, okay, so maybe I need to give this movie a little bit of a chance before I decide to, you know, take another cheap shot at Matt Damon. Also, Casey Affleck was involved in this, too. I forgot, yeah, him and another guy were the two brothers that really that made something. I forget, they're like TNT people. I forgot Casey Affleck was in there. But yeah, he was in, I think, multiple, at least two of them. But, But yeah, if you haven't seen the Oceans movies before you see this Oceans movie, you're not you're not going to get anything. So oh, okay. I'm sorry you didn't go see those Ocean's movies first. Yeah. I, hey, don't just go to this movie feeling feel confident because, no, 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 you should definitely see the prequels first. Otherwise, you're like, who the hell is this Danny Ocean? Why do I give an F that she keeps visiting his grave? You know, like, it's supposed to be a very momentous thing. I was predicting that George Clooney was going to show up at the end. <laughs> and he never did. I was very upset about that. I'm like, no, no, he'll, he's going to show up because Sandra Bullock and him are, are good friends. Um, so I would think that, like, near the end, like, he would, like, like she's having a glass of wine when they finish the job. And, like, he, he'd show up and just, like, cheers her. I'd be like, that, that would have made it a much better movie for me. Like, I would have been like, that's cool. But maybe they want to do, like, four of these. Oh, I would hate that, but maybe they want to do more. And obviously, George Clooney and that group are done. The only uh, we did get to see, I think his name was Benny, uh, the casino owner, the ex casino owner. Um, he was in it from the old cast, and the, the the small Chinese acrobat guy was in it again, which was cool. I, I was wondering who they were going to bring because I knew they would have to bring somebody. Um, so those two were pretty cool to 
to revisit. Obviously, some of the cast are passed away, like Bernie Mac, he has passed away. Um, I think that's the only one who's really passed away from the main cast. But, uh, but yeah, just for me, if you know what Ocean's movies are about, like I said, it's going to be blinged out. They're going to be very ritzy looking. It was a time in the 90s, you know, the early 2000s when, like, that was, like, the cool thing. Like, okay, we're going to rob a casino, but we're looking great doing it. We're all hot, attractive guys um, trying to get in, get in, get out, not be seen, not be too, like, boisterous but they always use like one person that's super rich and then that super rich person is like their bug that's in the place that is getting them to where they need to go so there's no surprises for me like they use a, a celebrity um who's a super rich person that's gonna bug the place basically help them out even though we don't really know that but obviously it's Ocean's 8 who else is the 8th player to Anne Hathaway is in on it Annoying, a very annoying character in this whole movie. Uh, hated her the whole time. Thought she was awful. Um, but yeah, they they really played up the we gotta look good. Oh, we let's do the cool walk. So let's do all this cool things, which was very oceansy. It's very oceansy. Um, it's just not really in anymore. I don't think. I was like. care if they all have dresses like did we have to get a shot of them all walking down the stairs walking out in their beautiful dresses no but since it's an oceans movie i can see why they did it um i also think what's very homage to these oceans movies is that they kind of tell you what's going to happen and what's going to go down and how it's going to go down and it's going to go down flawlessly and then they're also doing something in the background that you've never even heard of, you didn't get any clues really about um, that they're doing, and then you're like, oh, they did that. And then like in like three minutes, they'll show you, yeah, the whole process of this was even greater and bigger. And whoa, like we completed so much in that little time. We cr- we're so crazy and good at this. And you're kind of like, oh, cool. That happened too in the movie. And I didn't, uh oh. Oh, am I frozen? No, I'm not. Yep, you did. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, you're kind of like, oh, cool, that happened too. Don't really care. I just, I didn't really like the concept behind the whole movie, though, too. Like, I liked the Met Gala. Obviously, it was a different scenario than, like, diamonds versus, like, casino money. Um, but the reason they robbed them was like they didn't have a reason like why why rob of this Met Gal why rob a freaking museum like that's awful to me I, I'm like you're stealing priceless gems from a museum that's trying to show them to people they're not like the museum wasn't doing anything criminal with them they weren't doing anything except like showing this to like a bunch of very rich people but it's also open to the public like I well, like, oh, thanks for being all these jewels, going to sell them on the black market, and they're going to be gone forever when they're the royal gems. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, all the casino gigs were, like, this casino overtook this other casino in a very, like, shady way, undercut them. They're bad people. That's why we're robbing them, because they're bad people. Because all these... All these people that go into it really do have money. They don't really necessarily need money. There was one that was like, like, didn't they say she like owed the IRS five million dollars? Something like that, yeah. Five, five million dollars. That's what she owed. Five million. And they literally, she got a gig. She got like three gigs in this that probably paid her way over five million. She didn't even need need a diamond at that point. She just got paid. Like, there was no like. There was no reason for any of these people to do what they Well... Uh, I did this because I need more female friends. Yeah. Like, it was stupid. The yeah. whole movie was stupid. I will, I will agree that um, a lot of people definitely would say that the better performances were uh, on behalf of uh, Sarah, Sandra Bullock, 
Okay, Blanchett and Anne Hathaway. But I do agree with you on the Anne Hathaway one. She really didn't deliver that much. And just at the end where she was just saying, like, well, I don't really have friends, so I'm going to just team up with the criminals who stole from me. And it's like, um... Right? Uh, uh, okay. Because looking back at it, it's just kind of like, that. It, it doesn't make sense. I don't... I, I, I don't understand it. But I do agree with a lot of critics when they're talking about... Uh, Kate Blanchett's and Sandra Bullock's performances. Uh, the first scene that Sandra Bullock's in actually kind of almost got me a little bit. There's a little part part of me that was like, oh, I kind of feel bad for her because she's trying to now, you know, have a normal life and not have to do, deal with crime. And then about a few minutes, seconds later, she's just like, yeah, I put on that sob story. They fell for it. I'm like, oh my God, I love you and I hate you all at the same time, Sandra Bullock. And it's one of those things where it's like, she's so good at it because she's known for having such emotional scenes and for her to basically just be like yeah, I just made him cry whatever, it's like wow she okay, she may be one of the greatest actresses of all time if she could pull that off it was it, I, I just thought it was funny I, I, you might think it's cheesy, but it's just one of those things where I just, just thought that's brilliant actually it's what, I mean of course, you know in real life it would never happen like that but it's Sandra Bullock, come on you can't really say she, you know can't do it, but at the same time, I can understand why people probably got a little bit irritated by that. But um, yeah, I, th- I think Kate Blanchett she actually complimented Sandra Bullock a bit. I think the two of them worked very well as a duo, and it just worked out pretty well. So if there's any positives about it, you know, Kate Blanchett and Sandra Bullock they're really good together. So that's one good thing about this. Yeah, I liked Kate Blanchett. I liked Kate Blanchett in this this thing the whole time. Sandra Bullock was fine, too. Um, the scene that you were talking about, like, you were supposed to feel like she was acting. I did. I Like, she, it wasn't... Like, she was like... <sighs> like, she was doing... She was supposed to be acting as an act, like, acting actress. So, it was right. supposed to, you were supposed to feel like she's conning them. Um, but she was fine. I uh, Sandra Bullock was very uh, low-key in this whole thing, like, very even-keeled. I never really felt like she did anything that I thought was really cool. I thought it was selfish. I, I, think, I don't know. I, I think she probably delivered a little bit... I think she delivered a little bit of uh, comedy in there. I think that the... Well, basically, when they are in the gallery, and, uh, you know, she's basically acting like a foreigner... And she's basically talking about how, you know, her husband is a meathead and blah, blah, blah. It's just one of those things where it's like, okay, this is classic Sandra Bullock right here. That That is kind of funny. But that was, I think, the only other thing I could say about this is that if you're expecting it to be, like, you know, uproariously, you know, ha-ha, stuff like that, you kind of get, like, those little chuckles here and there, but nothing like a full-on, you're like, like, oh, yeah, that's really good. It's just one of those things where it's like, huh, okay, that's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not a comedy. Like it's not supposed to be a comedy. Like there are, obviously there were, you know, like one like I did the same thing. I kinda was like huh. but it was nothing like like hilarious, nothing like jaw like oh I just thought it, I didn't think it was very believable how they distract I didn't think her being a foreigner speaking Russian or whatever she spoke like really like you wouldn't go in the room just because she's talking I would be like here little woman let me put you to the side and let me get in and do my job because that's what I'm supposed to do like not just because I'm speaking a different language so I'm really confusing I'm so confusing right now my language is different and I'm just saying stuff as fast as I can and as angry as I can just to confuse you like no no better writing write something in there she could have distracted if she was this all-time amazing criminal that we're supposed to believe she is. Do something. Do something cool. Like, George Clooney's character did stuff cool. Like, Oceans did did cool stuff. Like, he would distract with different ways, and it was awesome. Um, And I I just think they didn't really... They didn't really... She didn't do anything. (laughs) She walked around. She walked around the Met Gala staring at her ex being like I'm gonna get you I'm gonna get you like the whole time and it was just like okay is this about stealing diamonds from the public from all the people or is this about getting back 
revenge about your ex and stealing from the people. Oh, wow. You guys are awful. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I, I don't know. I just... Like, yeah, how are you supposed to... I, I know in the, you know, early 2000s, we had that, you know, section of, like, criminal movies that were, like, rooting for the bad guys, kind of. But, but like I said, like, you always had a reason to root for that. Like, uh, let's say, like, John Q. If you ever seen John Q with uh, Denzel Washington? Like, he held up a hospital with, gu- like, with a gun. Like, he was holding people prisoner because he wanted a heart for his child. Like, so you're like... Yeah, I, I think that does get to be kind of... I, I don't know if I'd say misconstrued sometimes, but I think that sometimes I can understand them trying to go a different route in that deal. I think it would just be one of those situations where maybe they're just trying to be like, you know, Ocean's 8 is the one where they are literally... You know, bad people. They are literally just those kind of people that nobody would really either seem to care about, something like that. But I also would need to watch Oceans 11, 12, and 13 to really get a better knowledge of that, you know, background that they had. And it's, it's just really weird how they just, how they pulled that off. It's one of those things where this movie definitely had a lot of hype behind it, and it actually had a lot of shoes to fill. But unfortunately, it just did not have that. It just had a little bit of... a little bit of comedy, a little bit of certain things, but nothing really too major. Oh, and I think I might have lost my co-host... But we're going to try and get her back. So, honestly, guys, I'll just give, like, my final rating on this. I don't know. It's one of those things that I, I, I don't know. But usually, usually when I do these things, I usually do, like, a five-star rating, whether it was really good or something like that. But I think from now on, when it comes to movies, I'm just going to do thumbs up, thumbs down, or, like, in between, meh. It's not the worst movie I've seen this year. It, it really isn't. It's one of those movies where it's actually kind of in between to say the least I mean it's good to at least watch it once so that way you can say that you've watched it but it's not one of those movies where it's like oh I need this for my collection no 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 I think that you can deal with uh, yeah, you could do without the um, without Ocean's 8 I don't know it's, it's really weird so yeah, I'm going to try to get back to my co-host, and hopefully we can get her back on the line. And, no, well, let's see here. Uh, but the other thing that we were also talking about is going to be some of the trailers that uh, will happen, well, that have already happened, I should say, or some of the movies that are going to be coming out throughout the, th- throughout the year. So... It's going to be something interesting. A lot of the trailers here are going to be kind of, kind of interesting to say the least. I think that some of them are going to be have been better than others, which is really good. Because, um, so before we get into more in depth about some of the trailers that have been going on, I kind of give my. Uh, thoughts and my rating as far as, you know, Ocean's 8 goes. Uh, what exactly do you think your, yours is? On a scale from, like, thumbs up, thumbs down, to, like, meh in between, uh, Victor Bell, what would you give this movie, Ocean's 8? Yeah, I think I'll do the letter scaling, like, just like how the Dean's List does it. I would give it, like, a C-. minus. Like, I don't think it's worth seeing in theaters. If you really like the Oceans movies, you might enjoy it a bit, but it's relatively boring. There's not much action. It's a lot of just planning for the heist, and once the heist happens, again, nothing cool, no no good fight scenes, nothing like that. Uh, at least in the Oceans movie, they did get to fight a little bit, but this was a boring movie overall, kind of a fun list of cast members, but that's a out it, so I'd say maybe you wait till this gets on Netflix that you already are paying for, so you get it for free. 
Yeah, I guess I could agree with that. Like I said, it's one of those movies that it's okay to see it once, but then after that, it's just like it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, I need to add this to my Ocean's collection. No, it's it's no, no don't 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 ruin it. So yeah, yeah, don't pay for it. That's what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we can finally get on to talking about a lot of the trailers that have been going around. Uh, been playing this for about a couple weeks, but of course, a lot of things got in the way, mainly money in the bank, but now that's out of the way. <laughs> we can actually address some of the trailers that have been going on. Uh, you actually mentioned one that I saw, uh, actually I think it was maybe the week that it got released, but it was one of those movies that I look at the trailer and I think to myself, wow, this is a bit of a different one. And it's the uh, aptly named title, uh, Mowgli, which is another Jungle Book story. And it, it looks a lot different from a lot of the other Jungle Book movies that I've seen. I, honestly, I actually had to think back on how many different you know movies that people tried doing like spinoffs for whether it's been, you know, Aladdin or Lion King or Cinderella or stuff like that. And I always remember that there were, like, maybe, like, almost 20 copies uh, and different interpretations of what they thought uh, the Jungle Book was. So seeing this newer one come out, it's just kind of like, okay, I think we're getting stuck in this kind of loop again where we're going to see somebody's different perspective on it, somebody's different side of it. And the more that I look at this trailer, I think to myself, well, maybe they're actually sticking more to the book to the more the darker side than the friendlier side that a lot of people have been used to, but I, I don't know. What were your thoughts on this trailer when you first saw it? Um, when I first, literally when I first saw it, I was like, didn't we just have this? This is the next day. Um, but it, it is very similar, but you're right. Like, when I, I, I saw it a while ago, so I don't really remember it as crisply, but uh, I do remember it being a lot more uh, geared towards adult. Like, I think this is definitely PG-13. Um, it's a darker take on the Jungle Book movie. Uh, it, I, ugh, I, it's hard to remember it, but I do remember that I think Kate Blanchett is the voice of, of uh, the snake. So they have a lot of similarities. Like, it's still, like, the bear, the... the Black Panther, all of them have very similar voices. They all have extremely similar voices. And then the snake is like a female again. Um, uh, or Ka, Ka, whatever his name is. <laughs> uh, but the Mowgli character is, I think, less looking to be a man and more looking to seek the jungle life, if I'm correct. I... It, it kind of looks like that. I'm not exactly yeah, it, sure. But. It, it just seems a lot darker. Uh, again, I haven't seen it for a good two months. Uh, don't really remember it. Don't think I'm going to go see this one in theaters. Uh, I've already seen it. I liked the Jungle Book. I thought it was great. The animation looks on par to what Disney produced. I'm pretty sure this is probably a Warner Brothers uh, film. Uh, I'm not for sure who created it. I, my internet's obviously, I think it's on my side. My internet's not working, so I can't really look up anything to confirm anything. But it's definitely made by somebody else. Uh, they probably, most likely, were filming at the same time, and Disney, being Disney, got it out first. So, like, you got to ask yourself, if you spend this much money and time on a project, would you just not put it out? No, you got to put it out there, see what happens. I would think most people are going to be like, why would someone do the exact same thing as Disney? And the answer is they're probably filming at the same time. It was a rat race. Disney wins. We'll see if the Mowgli movie even lasts. Um, it looks like it's less for kids, which I think would be a negative for it. Uh, I think the Jungle Book is supposed to be kind of geared towards kids. I think that's why it did so well is that it wasn't a kid's movie, because when you saw it, there were some deaths, there were some scary concepts, but it was geared to, for kids. I think they're trying to differentiate it from the Disney version, so they're trying to be like, but this one might actually have blood and death. And you're like, 
oh, it still doesn't, it's not going to win over a movie that I would rather go see, because I've already seen, I already know the Jungle Book story. So, unless they do something extremely different, <laughs> which I, I'm not, I'm, still, I'm not going to see it, so... It looked cool. It looked interesting. I'm going to wait till it's out on DVD or Netflix. I think I might get a chance to watch it in theaters once just to say that I got the chance to. And maybe I'll even do a review on that sooner than a week, depending on how it looks. But, uh, yeah, you mentioned uh, Kate Blanchett's involved in this one. Uh, they Somehow they also roped in uh, Christian Bale and uh, Benedict Cumberbatch to perform in this movie. So that's that's a bit of an interesting move, but I don't think that with that kind of star power, it's enough to hook people in to be like, oh man, this is gonna be awesome, just for the sole reason to see, you know, you know, Christian Bale or Benedict Cumberbatch or you know, Kate Blanchett in there. I think, like I said, with that kind of star power, it's that's good, but is it enough? I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think it really is. Like you said. It definitely is seemingly a lot more geared towards adults than kids, which definitely takes out that demographic. But let's face it, there are going to be kids that are going to try and sneak in and watch this movie anyway, despite it, you know, probably not being that good. Uh, yeah, well, it might be decent. I, I wouldn't. It doesn't look bad. It just doesn't look new. So I, I don't really understand why I'd want to go see a, the story. I mean. If it was a Beauty and the Beast story, I, I bet I bet I'd be there. So I, Jungle Book fans will, will probably be there. If you love the Jungle Book, you're gonna go because retellings of the same story with the same themes that you love, obviously, you know, you're a fan. You're gonna support that. So I guess I maybe I was a little cynical. My bad on that. Um, but I just think I, I actually probably think that this is more of a UK. Uh, deal of it. If you notice, all the the stars are kind of from the UK. Uh, it'll be an interesting take that's not like a Disney take. So, I, again, I probably won't see it. I, I know your situation's different, Nate. Obviously, you get to go see a bunch of movies, and that's awesome. And <laughs> I like to hear. I like to hear what movies are worth it from you. Uh, so, if it's worth it, I will go see it. But I just think. It sucks when you lose the rat race. Like, if this came out before the Jungle Book, like, if this trailer was, like, before the Jungle Book, I'd be excited to go see it. It's after the Jungle Book. I'm not that excited. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, I love the Jungle Book, though. You, you did, too. It was a great movie. It, w- it was. I will admit that it definitely exceeded my expectations. And even though some people were definitely crapping on the fact that, you know, well, they had the songs that were involved in it and some of the characters were not that believable or some of the people thought, you know, they, you know, miscast. Like, some people were not very fond of the idea of uh, Christopher Walken as, you know, King Louis. I honestly loved it. And one of those things... It was great. It was hilarious. The the, the funny thing was is that when I started hearing him singing, you know, I want to be like you, I'm like, oh my God, I never thought I would see the day that Christopher Walken would actually sing a song. This is awesome. I I don't care what anybody says. (laughs) Yeah, it was fun. Uh, another movie... Well, actually, uh, speaking of Disney, we're definitely going to be talking about quite a few Disney movies that are actually going to be majorly hyped. Uh, the one that definitely a lot of people are very, very happy, and definitely happy to see, and definitely I'm going to go watch this movie, that being uh, Wreck-It Ralph 2, which is Ralph Breaks the Internet. So, yeah... What can we do after Wreck-It Wreck- Wreck- Ralph, where they're basically exploring the video game universe? Well, let's have them just expand that and go into the internet. This already tells me that this is going to be probably a good deal. And the fact that the trailer already mentions the fact that, you know, there's so many internet cliches or tropes. I mean, they, they show, like, things, like an actual tree where, like, Twitter would be. There's bluebirds that are just showing, like, Twitter messages. And I thought, okay, that's kind of funny. And there's this guy who's at a uh, desk who's basically almost like a, like like the like when you're trying to say something he's just basically trying to fill in one, like this like grumpy grumpy and all this kind of stuff it's like oh he's like an auto spell okay that's that's kind of funny and <laughs> we lo and behold get in the middle of this we get basically Disney World but in the internet form 
and I look at this, I think, I'm, okay, they're going down this route. And we're seeing the princesses, we're seeing characters. Then they bring the Star Wars stuff in, and I'm just like, okay, I'm going to see this movie. And then we see Vanellope, who is a princess in her own right, deal with the other uh, Disney princesses, which that scene alone got me sold. Where basically all of them are talking about how, you know, what? It, how exactly are you a princess? Do you have the you know, magic powers? Were you cursed? Were you locked away? Were you just, uh, you know, talking to, you were able to talk to animals? And Vanellope's just getting all freaked out, and she even asked the question, do I need to call someone? Are you guys being held against your will or something? <laughs> literally, they talk about the trouble about, have you dealt, in, dealt with a world where basically a big strong man is saving the day? And, she, and Vanellope's like, yeah, what is up with that? And just right then and there, they're just like, she is a princess! She is a princess! <laughs> just, oh my gosh, again, just that scene alone is like, okay, I'm seeing this movie, even if I'm like the only, ad- okay, I'm not going to be the only adult that sees it, but even if the only one in the theater that sees okay, that's not even going to happen either. I lost my point, but either way, I'm going to go see this movie. It looks absolutely amazing. <laughs> Yeah, no, um, I heard so much about it. The moment it came out, there was just Disney princesses galore across Facebook, like, showing all the Disney princesses and the more, uh, I don't, I don't think it's Pixar, but I think it has, you know, that, that more of a Pixar animation versus the old school animation, like, it's a little more 3D, a little more three-dimensional, um, and they looked great. I was so excited, um. I think it's a good concept, but this is basically, and I'm saying this in the most uh, PC way that I can, this is basically just Disney giving itself a hand job. Like, like, it's like, hey, hey, we're Disney, we have so much cool shit out there, let's do a movie literally just showing all our cool shit. Every, everything that people love about Disney, let's throw it in there, and people are going to go see this, and they're going to go ape shit about it. And they're right. They are so true. Like, you throw in all the Disney princesses in one scene, in one movie, they all talk. I heard the voices. I, I don't know if they're all the exact same voices. Probably some of them, like, you know, Cinderella and the older princesses, Aurora, might not have the same voice for obvious reasons. Um, but I, Elsa sounded the same. Rapunzel sounded like Mandy Moore. I, I haven't checked this out, but it would be really cool if they got all the same voices. Um, and Obviously, with Star Wars, you get the male demographic that is going to be as hype as the female demographic for their princesses. So, so I, I would be really, I, I'm going to be really excited. It, it's de- definitely just fan service at its best. We'll see kind of more of the plot at, when it comes out versus in the trailer, which again, I've told you multiple times, Nate, I really love that when, when they just allow the movie to speak for itself like Deadpool. Like, hey, we're going to show you that this is going to be a Deadpool movie, give you some funny shots right here, but you really have no idea what this movie's about and who's going to be in this, but you're going to go see it because it's Deadpool. You show me the Disney princesses and some stormtroopers chasing them, and it's all about Disney. We're going to go see this movie. And Wreck-It Ralph wasn't bad. It wasn't like a, a win, but it wasn't a loser. It was one of those movies that, oh, I'll see it, and maybe four years later, if it popped up on the TV, like, oh, I'll watch it again. Wasn't bad, but this this will be this will be entertaining. I'm excited for this one. <laughs> First of all, I want somebody to document this Victory Bell 2018. Disney is basically giving themselves a hand job. That is one of the best things I think I've heard on you this year. <laughs> it's true, though. It's true. <laughs> I, I, that's the most PC way I could have said other things but I just used handy J but, uh, <laughs> oh, but yeah they're pleasuring themselves in this they're like oh yeah we're Disney yeah we're Disney yes <laughs> that's what this movie is Oh my gosh, I love having you as a co-host. So, I, I, I don't know if I would say they're really giving themselves a hand job. I think in that trailer alone, it definitely does seem like they're giving themselves a little bit more credit than they really need. I guess you could say that. Yeah. 
say pat on the back, but come on, well, it's, stand up. Well, let, let's They're let's let, let's just get, yeah, let's just go with the HJ just for now, and then as time goes near, we'll see if that still is the case because there's going to be a lot more trailers that come out, but. Honestly, I'm looking forward to it. I actually watched the Wreck-It Ralph uh, movie throughout my breaks and my lunches at work sometimes where I had to figure out, okay, what's going on with this? What's going on with this? And there are some times where it's like a spot, part that I've seen, I'm thinking, okay, I need to fast forward, fast forward. Honestly, I enjoyed Wreck-It Ralph. I thought it was actually pretty funny. It was cute. Um, they had a, quite a bit of comedic moments, but it also was just one of those things that's different because it's like, well, hey... This is something for gamers. Some people might remember, you know, uh, Fix-It Felix. Some people might remember, you know, the uh, Turbo games. Some people might look and say, like, oh, yeah, I remember these first-person shooter games that were like this, and they were awesome, and blah, 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 you know, that kind of stuff. So going from that to the Internet, which I will say this, that this will be the best movie of the year if somehow this movie takes a shot at Emoji Movie where... Maybe somebody just says, like, you know, hey, it's like, oh, hey, there's a review for that. And it just shows emoji movie. It just shows, it has, like, a poo emoji right next to it. And it's be like, huh, what does chocolate ice cream have to do with the movie? Legitimately, if they did something like that, I would be like, okay, this is my number one favorite movie of all time, of this year. I don't care what anybody else says. You know what? Quiet Place is gone. Avengers, you had your shot. Deadpool, you did awesome. Oh. But... <laughs> I'm sorry, but if they if they took a shot if they did that shot that's for me would just seal it for me. But odds are they won't. Odds are they will not do that. So that's that's just a fantasy. So uh, again, another Disney movie that's definitely coming out. Ironically, on August third, which is a certain Sunday's day, I'm not going to mention any names. <laughs> um, is the Christopher Robin story now? A lot of people, I think. Have think like oh okay well we've seen something like this already it's nothing too special I watched this trailer and so many people I've known actually said that they were actually tearing up at how beautiful this trailer was done legitimately I watched this and I think wow this is like this is literally like a passing of the torch isn't it this is like from one generation to the next absolutely amazing and honestly side note Disney you need to sign Ian McGregor to a lifetime contract with you guys. Every role he's played with you guys, he's knocked it out of the park. Just just sign his, have him sign the name on the dotted line, keep him forever, keep him like, have him appear in like multiple different movies. I don't care. He is somehow the perfect person to fit this role because he's lovable, he's charming, he's definitely got a bit of a kid side to him when you're watching this trailer. It's just one of those things where it's like, Okay, we got Obi-Wan Kenobi playing Christopher Robin. Okay, we got Obi-Wan Kenobi. We have Obi-Wan Kenobi playing Christopher Robin as an adult. This may be one of the best mo- Disney movies in quite some time. And, and the fact that they also try to make, you know, the characters from the Hundred Acre Woods more lifelike and more, you know, something that you might be able to touch, something you might be able to feel. It's just very well done. I look at this and I think to myself, wow, this is actually really cool. I... There's some kids that might be a little bit scared to see a way the Pooh doll because they're thinking, like, oh, it's going to come to life. It's going to... No. This is one of the things where it's like, okay, this is just absolutely amazing. And they also have some of the characteristics. I think they actually have some of the original voices for, at least for Pooh and Tigger. I think everybody else has been kind of different, are different, you know, uh, voice actors. But they seem like they do fit the role, at least. Are they going to do an excellent job? Maybe. We don't know until we see the movie. But I just looked at this trailer and I'm just like, okay, I love this movie already. Now I'm looking forward to when it's coming out in theaters in August. It's It looks absolutely amazing. It, it really does. This, I mean, I don't know what generation really hasn't grown up with Winnie the Pooh. They try to keep him pretty relevant. Uh, I feel like a new movie comes out every, you know, five to ten years, you know, the Heffalump movie, or the Piglet movie, the Tigger movie, they've been really trying to keep him re- relevant, and it's because he is, like, they literally in the trailer, it's the most beloved character of all time, I'm like, who really has anything to say about Winnie the Pooh? Winnie the Pooh is this weird, chunky little bear that really loves honey, <laughs> like, it's just adorable, 
and the fact that they're doing such a throwback of Christopher Robin's an adult and Christopher Robin is Ewan McGregor, like, you, when I see Ewan McGregor, I just want to go to the movie, and if he's not singing in this movie, I'm going to be really upset, because he's Ewan McGregor, and he needs to sing all day, every day. Um, Are you hoping that he sings Be Our Guest? (laughs) Well, no, not that. I fell in love with him in Moulin Rouge, are you kidding me? That's when I fell in love with Ewan McGregor. Like, he's all over my Spotify. I don't I don't care. Um, but no, he does. He did great in Beauty and the Beast too. Obviously, um, I, I'm really excited about this movie too. I'm not. I don't think I ever was like a super fan of Winnie the Pooh. Like growing up, I think I was more of a Barney girl. But uh, I definitely had a Winnie the Pooh, and yeah, when I saw this, it brought back memories and it made me nostalgic. And that's kind of what they're going for. So did what it should have done and I think I'm going to go see it they do look like like they did a really good job the CGI nowadays is just phenomenal and I'm loving it I'm loving it so much I know some people are like oh we don't have to CGI everything blah 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 I'm like yeah but if you don't like you can tell robots you can kind of tell I, I like when they throw it back to the puppets sometimes I've talked about this before um, but Oh, they're so good. If CGI wasn't as good, like, five years ago, it wasn't as good. And people, it looked bad. It did. People were like, oh, my gosh, you can so tell that you're interacting with nothing. And this nothing character is doing weird things. It's not even casting a shadow. What's going on? But nowadays, like, you can literally see the leaves move under these little these little stuffed animals' feet. It's like, it's so cute. I'm excited. I will go see this movie. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of CGI animation, this is one where literally I saw the character and I'm like, okay, this might be one of those movies that could make me cry just because of how freaking adorable this character is. Uh, did you oh, see? Yes. Did, did you see the uh, the teaser trailer for Dumbo? I have seen the teaser trailer for Dumbo. What were your thoughts on it? Uh, because I think I've been taking over the reins a little too much, so. Let's, let's get your thoughts first on this one. Oh, it's okay. Um, I, there wasn't much for what I remember. Um, it, you kind of see the dark circus. Uh, guess who's controlling this? Tim Burton. Will I like this movie? I don't know. I'm going to go with I probably won't really like it. It's going to be a little too freaky for me. I can see why they picked Tim Burton. Uh, the elephants on parade scene in the original Dumbo was pretty trippy. Somebody was on drugs animating that. Um, <laughs> Tim Burton likes Tim Burton likes to bring. If there's some sort of creepiness about this movie, he can bring it out into a way that's very abstract that could be like taken seriously, or it could be taken like this is a trip. Uh, I feel like he's going to make everything. A little darker than it, it should be, but you know, Dumbo can be seen in two different ways. You can see the cute flying elephant with the large ears, or you can see the creepy circus freak that gets chained up and cruelty to animals type of way. And I kind of feel like he's going to be leaning towards the cruelty to animals way, which it's not a. Oh, I'm not going to say it's wrong. Because it's not wrong. It's just a creative difference that I have with Tim Burton is I just don't like his creepy style. Like, everything he does is is himself. He has a style. He's making a lot of money for using it and being himself. And I just personally am not a fan. So I don't know if I will like Dumbo. I will go see it. I saw the first Alice in Wonderland. And I was like... Oh, wow, that was not what I wanted. <laughs> and so that's kind of what I, how I'm going to feel, probably. I'm not a huge fan of Dumbo. I never really liked it, but I think it was because it was such an older Disney movie. Sometimes I had a disconnect with the really old Disney movies. But, but yeah, I, I don't know. He's not my favorite, Tim Burton. You know, 
I, I, I do definitely see your points. With Tim Burton, he definitely does have a little bit of a knack for either going too dark or too crazy or too out there. With this one, I think it might be the right amount if he can at least put a cap on it, which I know is asking a lot from Tim Burton. Yeah, he doesn't usually do that. Yeah. But I think that Dumbo is kind of a safe bet where they can actually do something like that, where they can go a little more above and beyond the, I guess, the level of what people are kind of used to. And also, you have to remember that this movie also features Mr. Batman himself, Michael Keaton. So it's definitely one of those movies that I look at and think to myself, okay, so this could basically have the same storyline, but basically maybe Michael Keaton and, you know, his uh, kids that they have in the movie, maybe they're kind of taking the role of the... Um, uh, Jesus, I can't remember what the name of the of the character's name was. The uh, marching band mouse, who's basically you know directing Dumbo and telling him, you know, oh, okay. oh, he's like, you know, you could be awesome. You're gonna be blah 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 blah. Maybe it's gonna be better with you know people actually doing it because of the fact that maybe it makes us kind of see you know the amount of compassion humans can have for an animal, especially one that is different, and it's literally one of those things where I think the first scene, one of the scenes that they show where, you know, Dumbo kind of reveals himself, so you don't see them, you know, laughing at him or ridiculing Dumbo, you see him more showing compassion for Dumbo, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, this might actually have a little bit of sweetness and tenderness to it, let's see what kind of goes with this, uh, I will probably see it, again, it'll probably be one of those things where it's once, but it's one of those movies that I kind of look at and think to myself, okay, this is kind of different. And they're changing up some of the characters, which is okay. Uh, but yeah, I, don't, I don't honestly know what to expect with this. It's one of those movies that I just saw the trailer, and we definitely talked about this in past uh, po- past podcasts before, where we mentioned, you know, how are they going to do that with, you know, Dumbo? Of all movies, Dumbo. And we see the first teaser trailer, and it's like, okay, this is actually promising so far. We'll see how it goes, because it could be something absolutely awesome, like, you know, the second trailer to Venom, or it could be just a complete letdown, like so many other movies. But we're not going to get into that, because that could be for a whole different podcast, and we could spend about 24 hours on that. Uh, The final movie trailer that came out, this was one that I kind of hit on a little bit before, and I don't know if you got the chance to watch this one. It was actually a different interpretation, and it's t- entitled The Little Mermaid. It's coming out in August as well. It's definitely got a different story to it, definitely a different name for a character. And I just look at this and I think, okay, is this going to follow more of you know what the original Little Mermaid was, when it was like completely dark and just, you know, not... PG for kids or or is it going to be like in a completely different direction I don't know it's one of those things where I see this trailer and I'm like it kind of piques my interest because it's not well first of all when's the last time that we got to see a live action mermaid movie it's been a while I mean to be honest the last time I think we've seen any mermaids in film were probably what was it probably uh, parts of the Caribbean Stranger Tides if I'm not mistaken where they had all those mermaids that popped up here and there, and they needed, like, the tear of the mermaid to get to the Fountain of the Youth. You know, that complicated movie. But it was one of those things where we got that preview from Disney, and it's like, why have we not seen more of this already? Why has Little Mermaid not come out from you guys, Disney? And this could be one of those cases you mentioned with uh, Jungle Book and with Mowgli, that this uh, theater company may have just, you know, beaten... Uh, Disney to the punch, maybe they're just like, okay, we're ready to start this going, we're ready to get this going, and then these guys release it, and it's like, okay, we have to wait, because then people are, because other people are going to get annoyed by this, and it's it's kind of weird, because this is not produced by anybody that, you know, you would know about, it's got um, uh, Conglomerate Media and Kingsway Productions as the production company. Uh, and I guess it's also going to be distributed by Netflix as well as AMC Theaters. So this could be one of those movies that we could just see 
on Netflix. It could be one of those movies that we just see in theaters. I don't know. It's one of those trailers that I just looked at and I thought, okay, this might actually be interesting, to say the least. I mean, am I going to watch it? Well, of course. But it's just one of those movies where it's like, is it going to be too far out there for people? But who knows? I mean, actually, the trailer debuted in March. Of, oh, wait, this debuted in March 2017? Oh, wow. So this is already like a year old. Holy cow. And it got 30 million views in like a matter of two weeks' time. Okay, so I missed out on quite a bit on this one, but... I mean, it looks, it looks really promising. I don't know. Did you get a chance to see that uh, trailer? I did. Yeah, I watched it. Um, it. Yeah, you definitely mentioned a few points that I would have mentioned, like how I, I literally said it about the rat race. This is a business. Uh, the entertainment business is a business. <laughs> and so if you put out something first, uh, you get a little bit more credit. First does give. Get you get you some views, gets gets you some watches, and if Netflix is distributing this and this is going to be a Netflix movie, I see it doing very well. Um, obviously, Netflix has a, a strong viewership; <laughs> they're doing they're doing great. Um, I like Netflix produced movies. I've seen a lot of them that are theater quality. Like, I mean, uh, the one with Will Smith uh, with the orcs. Uh, shoot, I forget what it's called. Shine or Bright, Bright. There we go, Bright. Um, that was great. That was a great movie. So if Netflix is taking the reins on this and saying, "Hey, we're gonna produce, we're gonna help produce this, make this great," I know it's gonna be a good movie. Uh, smart of them to not do the Disney story because they would probably get sued. <laughs> and. Disney is definitely going to have a Little Mermaid live-action movie. Uh, they're being very strategic about producing their princesses in real life. They need to find the right cast. They need to find the right moment to put them out. And they have Moana still floating around, you know, in, in Netflix land and all over. And Moana is a very similar story to The Little Mermaid. It would be dumb of them to put out a Little Mermaid when they just put out Moana. They also are already working on Mulan. Um, Little Mermaid is probably their number one princess movie of all time. If I can, if I'm not mistaken, I I think that like song wise, um, viewership wise, that was like the that's their big one. That's their their that's their winner right there. So seeing how well their other princesses have been doing. Obviously, Cinderella did not do that well. They didn't put any other songs. Um, then they go for Beauty and the Beast, and boom, it's one of the biggest movies of ever. Uh, they can only go up from there, I think, if they do the right things with The Little Mermaid. So keeping that in the, you know, in the canister for when they really need it or just allowing it time, uh, that movie is kind of timeless if you... When you put it out, people are going to go see it. So they don't really have to race anyone. So having this Little Mermaid come out, that is really based on the more circus. Again, it sounds like it's feeling like we have a lot of circus movies in, in the running for like kind of what people want to see in the late 1920s, 1930s or whatever. I don't really know when the circus was huge, but... Um, that's kind of a big trend I see coming up, and so having the circus trend and her being a circus freak, uh, I think it's great. I think it'll be really intriguing. It looks cool. Um, I will see it, especially if it's on Netflix. Yeah, I'll click on that. Um, but yeah, I think it's a good idea. It's great to not do the Disney movie, because and, it, and it's great if fans know. <laughs> Hopefully fans realize, like, this is not the Disney movie. Don't be dumb. It's going to be different because if you expect it to be the Disney movie, you're going to be disappointed. And I think you should like it for what it is. It's going to be probably a better themed movie because The Little Mermaid itself has some the vain and vanity that we probably don't want to teach kids anymore. So it's great that it's going to be probably more of the fact of acceptance and seeing her grow and maybe escape the circus or something. So 
it'll be cool. I'm, I'm excited. I think it, I think it'll be really good. And I will be even more excited for when that title with uh, the Disney insignia is out. Couldn't have said it better myself, honestly. So that's going to conclude this edition of the Game Changer where we talked about the one and only Ocean's 8. Let's hope it's the only one. As well as a lot of the trailers that came out over the last few weeks. Uh, definitely we'll be talking about a lot more that will be coming in the forthcoming weeks and months throughout the years. So definitely tune in for more of that. Uh, Victory Bell, do you have any crazy events going on in your neck of the woods? Uh, not that I know of. No, I, I'm really just focusing on the acting career, so I've been auditioning and doing cool stuff with that, but no, I have not been going to any cons, and it's been kind of interesting. I like it. It's, it's cool seeing the pictures that people are, are posting and being like, oh, that's cool, it's awesome. And that big part of it is a little like, oh, a little bittersweet, but I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's different, and I like it. <laughs> Well, you guys can always check out to see what Victory Bell has going on in her Facebook page. You can also give us a like on our Facebook page as well. For sure to follow me on Twitter. So with that being said, for Victory Bell, I've been Nate the Effing Great. Thank you for joining us here for another edition of The Game Changer. And we will talk to you guys in the next episode next week. Bye-bye.